How are you? Good. What How's is it going? that? It's a little uh, cat rattler. Ah. Uh, oh, she's looking uh, at me. Oh, what are you doing with my little rattler? There you go. Yeah. Okay, Brian, we're recording. Amen. Yeah, no worries. Is it for a cat or is it for the baby or what is it? Oh, no, for a cat. Well, I'm sure it's designed for a human, but, but right. things that are designed for humans seem to fascinate cats, like curtains and couches. Um, I get that. Yeah, no, I, I totally get that. Um, I wanted to start off by asking you, where did you come up with the voice for the penguin? Because I was talking to Matt Reeves the other day, and he said that one of the first videos he got off you when you were talking, when you were, when you were cast for the penguin was you and the makeup. Yeah. And then you had this voice just came straight out of you. Where did that come from? That came from uh, working with the dialect coach, Jessica Drake. Jessica Drake is she's an extraordinary dialect. Any really good, I've been lucky enough to work with some great dialect coaches in the years that I've been doing this racket. And each one of them, um, if they're worth their salt, it, they, it's not just about sound. You do a deep dive into character, knowing that, you know, your socioeconomic background, you know, where you come from, how many siblings, what your parents were like, all that kind of stuff really forms the tone and the pitch and obviously the, the, the sound, the accent. So I was working with Jessica for six or eight weeks leading up to the first makeup test. Matt was already in London and we did a makeup test here in Los Angeles. It took about seven hours. It was the first time I saw that I got the makeup put on and the bodysuit and the costume and the whole thing. And as soon as it all went on, the work that I'd done with Jessica just came out and it came out in a way that it felt more organic than it had done up until then. It was obviously the groundwork that we put in was there, but I was still only doing it in her office with her and it was still a bit tentative. But as soon as I was hidden beneath all that stuff, when it came out, it just felt easy. It felt easy and it felt organic. And, and I got some video and I sent it over to Matt in London from Los Angeles and he was, he seemed happy with it. So we're off to the races. You said there that it, it felt very like organic and very kind of, um, it, it, it all kind of came out of you. I'm wondering because I, I remember for Miami Vice, um, that you were paired with a DA agent and they had like the whole punk thing where like you like ripped open your shirt to show that you didn't have the thing on. No, I, I thought it was great. I thought it was great. But I'm wondering, like, I didn't, I didn't think it was great. <laughs> <laughs> but did you have, I mean, I mean, obviously not on that fucking scale, but like, did you have anything? Did you, I mean, what kind, I suppose, what kind of research did you do for this beyond like, you know, very little, you know coach? research? Yeah. I mean, I went, you know, I, I read some, some of the comics and, and, went into the Frank Miller stuff because I knew that that was kind of a template that that Matt was drawing from aesthetically and psychologically as well the energy of of that world um but mostly I just took what was on the page my conversations with Matt and then to be honest the makeup that Mike Marino designed I mean I can't stress enough how much it did the work for me not just in how how eyes see Oz or how I can see Oz or you saw or anything mm -hmm. experience Oz visually but when I saw the makeup for the first time it just it just ignited within me a kind of um imagination a reference to other films I'd seen as well whether conscious or unconscious and just there was a sense of pain to the face you know it was it was obviously there was a sense of threat it kind of radiated this danger, but there was also a sense of vulnerability somehow. I don't know if it was because of the scar and because of the pockmarked skin. I imagined he was a man that may have been made fun of in his life and his response to that would have been one of anger and rage and he would have fortified himself and made himself as strong and as threatening as the Oz that we meet. But beneath all that, there was kind of a sense of pain as well, maybe that, that drove him forward. So it, what he designed, Mike Marino, did so much of the work for me, you know? Yeah. Um, Matt also as well talked to you about uh, a possible TV series. Yeah. I mean, have you had any conversations about yeah, it? We have. Tell us had, about it? Yeah. yeah, we've had some Zooms and Skypes and what have you and, um, and talked about certain plot points and things that will be explored and yeah, man, it'd be a blast. I mean, to do this character for, it's for six months, you know, where I'm at the center of it you know, it would be so much fun to explore because with the six or seven scenes I had in this film, delighted to be a part of this film, like fanboy, delighted to be a part of this train as it, as it goes from station to station. But to be, uh, I wanted more. I get greedy and, and the character was so much fun. And I, I, 
I felt like there was so much exploration that I could have, that we could have ventured into. And, and now we'll get the chance to do it with a TV show and check out his origin and see what life is like just parallel to this other world that's the central world and always should be the world of Bruce Wayne and the Batman. Very cool. Well, listen, I hope it happens anyway, because I think the character you did was so interesting. I think there's definitely room for it to expand and naturally as well. Like it doesn't, it wouldn't yeah. feel like it was tacked on, like, you know? Yeah, no, and I, I, to be honest with you, Matt's not into tacking things there. She is now with another new Rattler. Thank you. Uh, Matt is not interested in tacking things on. He's not interested. Look, we all like to make a book and all that kind of thing. Uh, yeah. Matt really is passionate about what he does. I mean, he puts himself on the line, you know, as far as not as physical health, but maybe that too. I mean, he he must have slept four hours a night for four years, you know, and just obsessively pursuing um, the, the kind of integrity that he felt was a fundamental part of the design of this world going back to the 30s, going back to the original comics. And so he would only want to do this penguin thing if it felt organic, if it felt justified, yeah. and if you felt there were questions and, and areas that he could uh, curiously kind of investigate and, and make interesting and make provocative and ultimately entertaining, you know? Yeah, brilliant stuff. Okay, I have to get the wrap up there. Thanks, um, th thanks a lot. I hope, hope it goes well for you anyway. I hope that TV thanks. series comes together, yeah? Cheers. Thanks, I'll see you down the road. All the best. <laughs> Let's go!